Oh wow. Oh wow. Look at his eyes. That's amazing. That is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to Studio Wildlife. As it's coming up to Christmas, I thought I would do something cool and gift one of my pictures to a random person. Every day when I take Charlie for a walk, I walk round a hill and there are loads and loads of dog walkers that I just sort of say hello to and then that's about it. I thought I'd go up to one of those random people and ask them if they'd like to receive a pet portrait from me as a Christmas gift. On the walk, we met Eric the Bulldog Puppy, and after bribery with a few treats, we managed to take a few decent shots that I could use as a reference photo for a drawing. Before we head back to the studio, I'm gonna finish walking Charlie, and then obviously because she's fussy, she needs to be washed and dried before she'll even consider going into the house. So I've just got back from that quick little photo shoot and how cute was Eric the Bulldog? He's gonna be amazing to draw. I wasn't sure what medium I was gonna use for this pet portrait, but after seeing that little cute puppy, I've decided that I can't not put those blacks and those browns and those whites in, so I think I'm gonna do a pastel portrait. For this piece, I started out by transferring my drawing to some pastel matte paper. For pet portraits like this, I like to transfer my image rather than freehanding it, as honestly, it's just so much more efficient and saves so much time. I can get straight into the actual painting rather than faffing around with all the proportions and the underdrawing, which takes hours sometimes. I'm using the wine coloured pastel matte paper and it's 30 by 40 centimetres but the actual drawing itself is only going to cover about 20 by 30 centimetres as I'm going to be putting it into a frame with a small amount. My initial steps for this piece in pastels are the same as if I were doing it with paints. I'm looking for the large masses and the simple shapes first. I'm using the Faber-Castell pastel sticks to block in the basic colours, starting with the ears and moving on to the rest of the face. I wear gloves when I work with pastel as it prevents the grease from my hands affecting the pastels. I can rest my hand on the paper with the glove on and it doesn't pick up or smudge the pastels as much as if I rested my bare hand on it. Plus, the black glove looks pretty cool in the video too. You can see that after I block in the basic shapes for each section, I'm using my finger and rubbing the pastel. This is doing two things. It's softening the pastel and blending the edges of the shapes together, and it rubs the pastel into the grain of the paper, which makes it much easier to add more layers over the top. It can be hard to build up layers in pastel if you've got lots of loose pastel dust on the surface of the picture, so rubbing it in just fixes that. I also do the background at this stage, putting down lots of different greens to add variation and depth. I chose the green because it matched my reference photo. I like having a detailed reference to work from, but sometimes you're gonna have to deviate from your reference. The more you practice, and the more experience you get painting or drawing different subjects, the more you can rely on that experience to deviate and move away from your reference photo and improve on it. Next, it's onto the details. Now I've got those basic shapes, it makes adding the details much easier. I can focus on one small section of the piece at a time and fully render each section as I go. I left the eyes out of the blocking stage. This was because they are usually the focal point of my pet portraits. So I actually want those eyes to look a bit sharper and draw the viewer into the piece. It's a little bit easier to create sharp edges with the pastel pencils, so I just use those mostly for the eyes, but I didn't have the right colours in the pastel pencils, so I used a more saturated pastel stick just to give the colour of the eyes a little bit of a pop. The pastel pencils I'm using for this detail stage are the Derwent pastel pencils. 
I like the consistency of these pastels. I don't think they're too soft and they're not too scratchy either. And as I said, I like to use the pencils rather than the sticks for the detail because it just gives me a little bit more control and precision, which is perfect for when you're rendering these short strands of fur and these smaller details on pet portraits like this. Because I'm right-handed, I try to minimise the risk of smudging my work by working from left to right. Like, I've seen people use greaseproof paper to rest their hands on, but I find that even if I'm using that greaseproof paper, I get a little bit lazy and tend to lean my hand on that paper more than I probably should, and I still find it smudges the picture, and I pick up colour and transfer it from one place on a picture to another place. I just try and be careful and rest my hand on the paper as little as possible. And even if I do, because I'm wearing those gloves, it does reduce the amount of transfer and the smudging that I would get if I was using my bare hands. In doing this, I actually forgot how much I actually love working with pastels. I find them much quicker than painting with acrylics and definitely so much faster than painting with oils. And they are great for these smaller, realistic pieces, and I do need to start doing more of them. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about my pastel process, I've posted a full tutorial of this piece on the Studio Wildlife Patreon. In the video, I go through all of my techniques and all of the different colours that I used in much more detail. Okay guys, it's time I have finished the picture. I've made a few changes since you've seen it in the video, but I'm not going to show you because it's all wrapped up and ready to be gifted. I really hope they like it. Okay, wish me luck. Let's go give it to them. Charlie and I arranged to meet up with Eric and his owner Paul to hand over the painting. Here you go. Ah, wonderful. Thank you. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Look at his eyes. That's amazing. It's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Merry you. Christmas. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you. Eric, what do you think? <laughs> Seal of approval. <laughs> there you go. I made a few changes, lightening the eyes, lightening the white fur, and adding a blue background that you guys didn't see in the video. I think this managed to push Eric forward, and I think the pastels worked really well to capture a great likeness of Eric, and clearly both Paul and Eric loved the final piece. It was amazing to be able to do this and get that reaction. If you'd like to see more of these style of giveaway videos, please do let me know in the comments, because it would be amazing to get to continue to do this. And I mean, I'm probably gonna do it anyway, but it'd be amazing to film it for you guys and put it on the channel. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about how I go about drawing and painting dogs, then why not check out this video here where I go through my full process for drawing a dog. I use Procreate for this, but it is the basic steps and the basic underdrawing that is essential for any type of picture, whether that's painting, drawing, digital, or even pastel pieces. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.